So in this video, I'm going to paint this little landscape that you see here. This is the finished painting. Um, I did this one um, using a source image that I created on Mid Journey. Um, and without further ado, here's me painting this little landscape. So for this painting, I decided to pre-mix uh, some colors. So I've pre-mixed just the main color groups so that I wouldn't have to spend a lot of time doing that while I was painting. Um, the last couple of these that I did using an AI uh, source image, I, I just mixed the colors as I went. But if you want to know, um, learn more about color mixing, I have some really good videos on how to mix colors. And also, um, if you want to follow my method along, this is sort of me doing my own thing, but it's not necessarily the way you would paint if you were um, painting according to my teaching method. So if you look in the description of this video, I have all the links to my other videos that teach how to paint in oil, all the fundamentals, uh, including how to pencil, how to mix your colors, how to match any color um, to any other color. And also um, I've put in there um, videos that uh, about other subjects related to, you know, getting started uh, with painting and learning how to paint in oil. But this is m just me um, kind of doing it my way, but I've, as you can see, I've mixed up uh, about five different color groups, and each one of those starts with the darkest color in that color group up going up to the lightest. So just getting started here, I'm putting in, um, just got my brush full of black paint, but I'm just kind of scrubbing it on. I'm not putting it on thickly. I'm just basically using it as a pencil to get all my uh, drawing done, which isn't very much for this uh, little landscape. And then just starting to fill in um, the blacks first. And I always try to start with the darkest colors first just to get um, the value um, you know, get my value started in the right way, knowing that black's going to be my darkest color. Um, and uh, some of these, like these trees, I'll just kind of scrub them in with black paint like I'm doing, uh, just so I have the shapes. Um, and then I'll go back in and, and put in the, the real strong blacks later. Also, I'll wait and put in the light greens later as well. Really just trying to get my... Uh, my composition um, finalized before I start putting in any, uh, before I start painting thickly. If you, if you paint thin like this, it's very easy to paint on top. Um, but if you paint thickly, um, it's that much harder to make adjustments as you go forward. So just laying in um, the house and the few trees that are in this painting painting in the little chimney. And in this, this um, uh, painting, I decided I would basically paint it the way that I saw it, and I would naturally, I would, I'm not gonna you know, try to paint it verbatim exactly the way I see it, but I really like the composition, so I'm gonna leave it the same. I'm gonna make some changes in color, um, and uh, also, you know, one, one thing I always do whenever I paint these landscapes, I always like to imagine myself in the landscape. Um, I've talked about this before in some of my other videos, but that's sort of, I think, you know, without even trying, when I paint these landscapes, I feel like I'm in the landscape. And it makes me, uh, I think that's why it's so therapeutic for me. Um, you know, it's just like going for a walk out in the country or something. But uh, the one thing I did change was I decided not to put the holes that are in the roof because apparently, you know, this was supposed to be an old rundown um, farmhouse, I guess, but I wanted it to look like a little small house that I could live in. Um, I think that I, uh, my ideal, you know, place to live is out in the country. Um, I say that, but then it sure is nice to be near a big city where you can go and go to the good grocery stores and eat at nice restaurants and the rest of it. 
but who knows where I'm going to end up for my uh, retirement. So these purples, um, one of the things that I've learned, you know, I, I don't like to use any formulas for my color mixing or color scheme or whatever for, for any given painting. Um, I think that, you know, I'd, I was always afraid that I'd get stuck following a certain formula and wouldn't branch out. It's sort of like getting in a box. So, um, but one thing I have noticed, and I've mentioned this before, but if you take a strong color and you have a dirty complement, so strong color here in this case would be purple, and the dirty complement's going to be um, like an, or an orange or a uh, yellow. Yellow being the complement of purple. But it's kind of a bluish purple, so orange makes a nice complement to it. So in the foreground, later you'll see me paint in some orange. But I'm starting with this strong purple. And I decided to paint it actually not as strong um, as it was in the source image. Um, by the way, I, I got this source image um, from Mid Journey. You can Google it and go use it yourself. I think they now require a subscription to use it, but it's not too much. And you can get thousands of images for that. So I really love using Mid Journey to get ideas for paintings. Um, it's very common that I'll use multiple images and I'll take the foreground from one and, a, and then I'll generate a variation of it and maybe um, you know paint the sky from a different one or whatever. But this one I just use a single image which I would say is unusual. So just uh, always adjusting my colors a little bit here and there. The purple's strongest down near the horizon and then as it goes up it turns um, less, uh, less purple and more gray. Um, I talk a lot about in some of my other videos about working with d dirty colors and that's always true and I always like to remind my students about that um, and that is that if you give me a painting that has really strong colors to begin with and then you tell me to make the colors less strong um, that's very difficult but on the other hand if you start with dirty colors um, it's always easy to uh, make the colors more vibrant. In other words, it's really nice to have a, a dirty base. And so in this painting, um, you know, I'm just putting it in. I did paint the purples less than I saw in the source to begin with, but I also know that um, I'm going to end up dirtying down these colors a little bit, um, or altering them, I should say, not necessarily dirtying, making them more dirty. But I always like to work dark to light, and the one time that kind of doesn't work is when you're painting skies with bright clouds or whatever. Because, for instance, these clouds that I'm painting, and by the way, I, did, I didn't turn my cameras on for one of my little painting sessions. So what I was saying is, is that if you... Until I put in these lighter colors, you couldn't tell that those purple clouds in the foreground were actually darker than the rest of the sky. So sometimes I just go ahead and put in my lights like I'm doing now uh, before you can really understand what the rest of the clouds are you know, supposed to look like. One thing you'll notice is that I'm not over blending and that's really important you always want to leave a little bit of texture everywhere even if it's a you know like a solid color like up in the top that blue that baby blue color there's still a little bit of texture there I did not smooth it out with a big fan brush or anything like that so having a little bit of texture everywhere it allows it gives your your mind uh, and your eyes something to grab onto um, 
and it's something I've talked about in a lot of my videos, but you can paint um, something the wrong texture and nobody cares. In other words, you can paint a smooth peach with a real texture of like a dirt road or something. And as long as your values are right, everything works. And that same principle applies here when I'm painting this sky. So if you look up in the top, there's still a little bit of texture on the surface, a little bit of difference of colors, and it's not just like you've taken a spray paint and just made it perfectly smooth. So now you can see some of those yellows in parts of the sky and how nice that looks against the purple, meaning the, the purple and yellow being opposite colors. And that's why the sky is as colorful that it, as it is, because the yellows make the purple stronger and the purples make the yellow in the skies stronger. So the yellow being a dirty yellow and the purple being a strong purple. So starting to fill in the foreground and I, I like to, this is just a darker dirty green that I'm starting with so even here in the foreground I'm working dark to light. So these are all the darkest colors in the foreground for the most part. So I'll, I'll get into those lighter colors later. One of the things I I really loved about this. Um, the re one of the biggest reasons I think I chose this as um, something to paint was because the colors were just so nice. And they're colors that I would not have thought of on my own. I don't believe I would have uh, dared to paint the foreground with these strong um, greens. And, and later you'll see me put in some oranges. Um, that's something that I picked up from the um, mid-journey image. So I left that in there. So I guess this house, little house here, was looks like it's being illum illuminated by that afternoon sunlight that's hitting the tops of those white clouds off in the distance. So this front face of the house, I was sure to paint very bright because it's being lit by direct sunlight. Um, and then you have the dark areas off in, in the horizon, and those are all in shadow of clouds. So it's one of these, it almost makes it look as if this little house is sitting on a hilltop in the sunlight, the fading sunlight, and then the dark off in the in the distance is, is all in shadow of those dark clouds. Anyway, it's, I try to understand what the light's doing, and um, I did make a few little changes, um, to, especially to the house, just to make it make more sense. Um, the roof line's a little different because I wanted it to have a little bit of an overhang which I didn't see in the original image. And also I ended up putting a big shadow to the left of that house because I'm imagining the, the sunlight hitting it and casting that shadow back there. So starting to put in some of these more orange colors and it's those strong oranges that really, I think, work well with that blue sky orange being the opposite of blue. This part of the roof I was uh, not sure how to do it. I had to assume that it's being lit by the fading sun but probably not as brightly lit as the front side which is fit hitting it directly. But I did decide in the end to uh, to not paint it as if it was in full shadow. Although this left side of the chimney I did make, um, have a very distinct shadow. And I sort of amplified that compared to the source image, especially the shadow um, 
of the chimney along the roof there. This one, uh, I think it was took me about three hours total to paint it. I probably was sitting in my chair four hours, but I wasn't painting the whole time. So I think an actual painting time is about three hours, which I've condensed down to this, um, you know, down to about 25 minutes for this YouTube video. I always try to include the essential parts so you guys can kind of see how I actually paint. So the paint I'm using is the Geneva Artist Oil Color, which is available at GenevaFineArt.com. And uh, this is my own private paint company here in Austin. And this, our paint doesn't have any fumes in it, so you don't have to worry about ventilation. The medium's already mixed into it. And it's just a very slow drying paint. And uh, with, um, it's ready to use, just squirt it out, and it has the highest pigment load of any paint you can buy. Um, you know, these landscapes are really, I, I think they're a lot of fun to paint. Um, I think that it's good to have, um, you know, the one thing that people who've never painted before have the most trouble with is getting their values right, meaning the darkness and the light, lightness of their colors. But, um, you know, if you have, if you print out one of these mid-journey images and you laminate it, um, you can just put spots of paint right on your laminated photograph and get really good uh, and check your values while you work. And that's something that I do a fair amount of, just to sort of get my bearings right. I didn't have a camera on the source photo, so I don't have any pictures of me checking my colors, but it's not uncommon for me to just go over and take whatever color I have in my brush and just put spots on the photo to kind of see if my values are, are where they should be. Values meaning darkness and lightness of the color. Not, not the color, like not how yellow or blue or red or orange it is, but rather how dark or light it is. So you can have a really dark orange, like pure burn umber, or you can have a really light orange, which would be like just yellow and red mixed together. Now, I'm amping up this brightness on the front of the little house because I want to um, I'm imagining the sunlight hitting it directly there. I wasn't real confident about what I was doing here, but I, in the end, I think I decided it was better to be bright. And now I'm just putting in a little bit of... I don't like my color to be monochromatic, meaning just orange, you know, from shadow to highlight of a certain intensity. So I'm... You'll notice going in and, you know, mixing up, putting in little spots of other colors. And you'll see me do that in the trees and in the foreground and everywhere. And that's because I want colors that, you know, cover the whole spectrum. So I learned that. Um, I've learned so much from John Singer Sargent. But one of the things I learned from him early on as I was doing a portrait with a window back in the background and I decided to copy one of his windows out of one of his portraits to put in the background of one of my paintings and I co copied it and thought I did a pretty, you know, just kind of verbatim. And then I couldn't figure out why I liked his window so much more than mine. And then I, when I really started looking at it, I realized that he had a lot of different colors working. So it would be like not just blue, but gray and a little bit of brown or whatever it is. And so that's uh, something I've always done. If you look anywhere in the painting, you'll see the full range of color for the most part. But even in that purple over there in the bottom left over there, where it looks like it's just pure purple, um, and it's not exactly pure purple, there is a little bit of variation there, but at the um, toward the end of this painting, 
In fact, one of the very last things that I did was I went back in there and, and toned down that purple by putting a little bit of like a yellow. It wasn't really yellow because by the time it blended into the purple, it was, you know, you could hardly see it. But just, just to mix up my color a little bit so it wasn't so monochromatic, I added some uh, burnt umber and yellow to that purple area. So now I'm mixing up some really strong colors. Um, just to create some, again, it's that, you know, the blue in the sky, and then this orange is the complement of that. And that's why this painting is so colorful. As you go all the way from blue, all the way to orange, which is the exact opposite. It's easy to understand complementary colors if you think about red, yellow, and blue as being the primaries. And so the complement is everything. So for instance, if you say if you have blue, well, well, the opposite of blue is orange, which is made with the other two, yellow and red. So yellow and red is the opposite of blue because it's everything but blue. Um, opposite of green, which is made with yellow and blue, is red. It's basically every red is and uh, green are exact opposite colors so that's why they're called complements. So I'm putting in the lighter greens now. Um, the stain color that I'm painting on is a nice color um, for it, it generally just works well with everything because it's just a dead neutral. So when you paint, it's uh, darker than most people like their stain, but it's the way I like it, and we sell it at Geneva Fine Art. Um, and what's nice about it is, as you can see here, it kind of works with everything. And you could almost stop the painting right now, and that um, stain color coming through is nice. But I cover it up for the most part, but even when the painting's finished, there's a few little bits of that stain showing through. And that just is another way of, you know, making the color look less monochromatic because it's kind of all over the place. So it was, um, a lot of this painting, when I painted it, I was very unsure about everything, really. I just... In fact, when I was completely finished with it, I didn't really like it, but which is nothing new for me because I have, every time I finish a painting, I'm always real picky and I just can't ever enjoy my own work. But I always, I have a group of people that I can send this finished painting to and ask them what they think and they'll give me a, they'll give me the straight answer and tell me whether they like it or don't like it. And I always have to, you know, I think I just have the artist curse so bad that I, by the time I finish a painting, I never know whether it's even worth looking at. Um, so it's always nice to get a, a compliment from friends. So just um, kind of ab putting a little abstraction in that horizon line. It was a little too clean. Um, this is uh, those posts holding up that little small roof there. Uh, I figured they would also be hitting by direct sunlight. So on um, the edge of that roof there, I'm just going in and putting those places in where I think the sunlight would be hitting the building. Just to set it off. Now this color is going to be in, not nearly as bright. In fact, I might have painted this a little bit brighter than I should have. But there it is. Uh, okay, so this is where I decided that this whole house um, needed to, if the sunlight was coming, hitting the front, that it needed a shadow on the back. And this is the kind of thing that the, the AI will, will get wrong. 
Oh, by the way, I wanted to mention to you that I am teaching classes here in Austin, Texas. And if you have any interest in learning how to paint in oil, in my classes I teach all the fundamentals of oil painting. And uh, you can email me at mark at drawmixpaint.com and just ask for information about my private classes here in Austin and I'll send you uh, some information. Um, one of the things about the, when I filmed this, the, uh, the color was not quite the same in the video versus taking a good still image of the finished painting. But, um, now I'm putting in some really strong oranges just because I felt like it. I don't know why. Can't explain to you why I did decide to do that. Putting in a little bit more abstraction into the trees, some little dark bits here and there, just to sort of make it look more detailed. A couple of branches sticking out through the leaves, just so it wouldn't look too much just like a, a blob. Um, a little bit more sunlight on the vegetation growing in there. And here's a detail shot of the finished painting. So you can see some of the brushwork. And then here is a nice picture of the finished painting uh, taken with a still camera. Well, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate everybody's support. And we'll see you guys in the next one.